Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? No more crack babies, thank God. White climate change, Diddy got the dirt, and $17 million mugshot. It ain't the Donald. <laughs> And you're here with the big sig tig uh, i'm getting a lot of polarizing comments on my mask like you freak uh, nobody wants to see you take off your mask well here's the truth i'm sure a lot of people would like to see what's underneath this and a lot of people are wondering why i'm covering it up and uh, you haven't checked out the previous episodes the reason why is because my wife doesn't believe i can get any followers uh, unless i show my face and I was like, uh, challenge accepted, and here we go. We're about to crack 100. We're at 98. Will you be the 100th subscriber? Let's find out. Well, concerns about structural racism prompt a major Massachusetts hospital network to change policies about babies born addicted to drugs. A major hospital network in Massachusetts has now revamped its policies regarding babies born addicted to drugs in an attempt to address significant racial and ethnic inequities. It claims... Uh, are associated with substance abuse disorder addiction on tuesday uh mass general brigham the commonwealth's largest hospital group announced that it will no longer automatically report that an infant has been born with drug addiction since the automatic reporting and other such policies disproportionately affect black individuals so black moms are more addicted to drugs than other races so we're not going to report it because there's too many of them so pray for the children please current commonwealth law demands mandatory reporting of all infants with physical dependence upon an addictive drug at birth however the hospitals affiliated with mass general brigham including massachusetts general hospital brigham and women's hospital newton wesley wellesley sorry hospital and salem hospital will now encourage reporting such cases to child protective services only if the babies are suffering or at imminent risk of suffering physical or emotional injury yeah they're addicted to drugs they're of course they're suffering another policy change at mass general brigham means that medical professionals will now conduct toxicology tests on newborns and or pregnant people sometimes referred to as women only under two conditions first hospital workers must be given written consent to perform the test second they will perform the test only if the results will affect the medical treatment the mother and or child receives and there you have it people the hospitals have gone woke and they don't care about the uh, children they only care about the uh, perception of dei unbelievable do no harm CDC issues health alert for bird flu infections in the U.S. Well, we covered this uh, last week. Well, the CDC has finally caught up and said, oh, well, we better get on top of this before it turns into a pandemic. The U.S. CDC on Friday issued a health alert to inform clinicians, state health departments, and the public of a case of avian influenza in a person who had contact with dairy cows presumed to be infected with the virus. The farm worker from Texas was reported to be infected on April 1st, making it the second case of H5N1 strain of avian influenza, commonly known as bird flu, identified in a person in the United States. It follows a 2022 case in Colorado and comes as the virus is spreading to new mammals, including dairy cattle, for the first time. To prevent infection from the virus, the CDC recommends the use of personal protective equipment, PPE, testing, antiviral treatment, patient investigations, and monitoring of persons exposed to sick or dead wild and domesticated animals and livestock that may have been affected with the virus. So heads up out there. Stay away from those mad cows. New United Nations Youth Advisor blames climate change on capitalism and white men. Here we have uh, the young stir. The United Nations has selected a new youth advisor named Aisha Sidaka. Or Sidakwa. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. She is openly socialist and Marxist and blames climate change on capitalism and white men. Specifically, white men. In other words, she is a perfect fit for the UN. Sidaka is from Pakistan. Uh, has she ever examined the pollution created by her neighbor nation of India, which has a billion people, and 88 of the 
100 most polluted cities are in India. Oh, well, I mean, it's definitely white people there. I've been there. I didn't see any white people. Except, like, up in Rishikesh near the yoga retreats. I see lots of white people there. UN advisor says the white man has brought life, as we know it, to the verge of extinction. Racial harmony is fallacy. The United Nations Youth Climate Advisor has a history of social media posts that call for the destruction of capitalism, claim terrorism is used as a Western smear to justify its imperialism, and attack white people for purportedly fueling humanity's extinction vis-a-vis -vis the climate crisis. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez personally selected Pakistani-American Aisha Siddiqui as one of his advisors to help accelerate the implementation of his climate action agenda. A 2023 UN announcement stated, Siddiqui was a Time Woman of the Year in 2023 who has co-founded two youth climate activist organizations. Siddiqui attributes a simple cause to climate change, white people. In March 2021, she posted, The white man has brought life as we know it to the verge of extinction. It also brought us to the levels of technology we are at today. The white man sits at the highest level of power in the world, the same way he has killed, looted, and abused black and brown people for profit. So has the he the earth. She posted in May 2022. We're allowing white people to have too much space. White people have absolutely no prerogative or authority to lead the movement. Meet Aisha Siddiqui, a climate advisor for the UN. She claims the white man and capitalism are responsible for bringing life to the verge of extinction and calls white men killers, looters, and abusers. Her account is filled with hateful anti-white posts. So she's clearly a racist, because if you replace white with any other color, then you're immediately going to be attacked, shut down, and destroyed. So uh, just keep an eye out for uh, the racist in the UN, Sadika, Aisha Sadika, who's completely ideali idealized uh, world is completely fabricated in a fantasy. I know I won't be surprised if she uh, comes out as uh, an alt, living an alternative lifestyle. Illegal immigrant charged for child sex crimes. No surprise here. We've been covering this for months. An illegal immigrant was recently arrested and is awaiting deportation proceedings after being charged with multiple crimes in Massachusetts over the past two years, including assault and child rape. The illegal immigrant had been previously released multiple times by law enforcement officials. Congratulations, Joe Biden. According to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, press release, enforcement, and removal operations, Boston officers arrested a 33-year-old Guatemalan national near his residence in Lynn, Massachusetts last week. The unidentified illegal immigrant is expected to remain in custody under ICE while waiting for his scheduled hearing before a Department of Justice Immigration. So they're actually holding him. Unbelievable. Because uh, typically they're going to just release them. ICE officials explained the Guatemalan non-citizen unlawfully entered the United States on an unknown date at an unknown location, and without being inspected, admitted, or paroled by U.S. immigration. The definition of a broken border. If you can just walk through and they don't know where, when, or how. Border's broken. According to the press release, 33-year-old illegal immigrant was first arrested and charged with strangulation and suffocation, assault and battery of a household member, and reckless endangerment of a child in March 2022. However, one year after his arrest, the Lynn District Court dismissed all charges against the illegal immigrant. ICE noted that the illegal immigrant was also charged in June 2023 for a compulsory insurance violation, number plate obscured, not displayed, concealed identity, and forgery. However, the second set of charges was dismissed by the East Boston District Court. November 2023, the illegal immigrant was charged with three counts of battery, indecent assault on a child under the age of 14, one count of assault to rape a child, two counts of assault and battery on a child with injury, and one count of intimidation. ICE reported that all of the indictments against the 33-year-old illegal immigrant were dismissed for Superior Court arraignment in February of this year. According to ICE, the unidentified illegal immigrant was later arraigned at the Sussex Superior Court on nine counts of indecent batter and assault on a child under the age of 14, one count of child rape, one count of intimidation of a witness, and two counts of battery and assault. So there's your cultural enrichment people. This uh, undocumented person came in and had his way with the country and the people in it. He didn't care. Uh, while ERO Boston lodged an arrest warrant and immigration detainer against the illegal immigrant in November with the Essex County Correctional Facility and Massachusetts court system failed to honor the immigration detainer and ordered the illegal immigrant be released on an unknown date. The illegal immigrant was finally arrested again last Thursday and remains in custody. Thankfully, the, uh, this unlawfully present Guatemalan national has been charged with sex crimes against Massachusetts children. His very presence in our community 
represents a dire threat to our residents, but not according to uh, the uh, correctional facility in Essex County. And, uh, you know, they're probably white people, white liberals, who are terrified of all of this uh, culture, color culture, like, bull that's coming down the pipes. Like, you know, white people are bad, colonialism is bad, we can't put black people in jail, black babies are crack babies, but we can't tell anybody because it's too many blacks and there's not enough Hispanics or white people with crack babies. So or we're just going to not report it. So crack babies don't exist no more. Boom, Vatican blast, gender affirming surgery, surrogacy and gender theory as violations of human dignity. There you go. The Pope finally pulls his pants up and uh, says what's supposed to be said. The Vatican has declared that gender affirming surgeries and surrogacy are grave violations of human dignity. Uh, they declared the surgery uh, grave violations, putting them on par with abortion and euthanasia as practices that it said reject God's plan for human life. Yeah. What is God's plan? Procreation. Go forward and multiply. Procreate. The alternative lifestyle is not having children. So they're alts. If you're against creation, then you're alternative. That's how I label it. Okay? Procreation or alternative. The alternative is not creation, non-creation, whatever you want to call it. A-L-T-S, alts. The Vatican's doctrine, a fist doctrine office issued infinite dignity, a 20-page declaration that has been in the works for five years. After substantial revision in recent months, it was approved March 25th by Pro Pope Francis, who ordered its publication. From a pope who has made outreach to the LGBTQ plus community a hallmark of his papacy, the document received as a setback albeit predictable, by trans Catholics, but its message was also consistent with the Argentine Jesuit long-standing belief that while trans people should be welcomed in the church, so-called gender ideologies should not. Yeah, you welcome people into the church and you say, go forth and sin no more. That's like when Jesus was there and they were about to stone a prostitute and he said, okay, let he without sin cast the first stone and the rocks just start hitting the ground. Nowhere near the prostitute because all of the people who were about to stone her were realizing, well, yeah, I'm uh, a sinner too. So he went to her and he said, go forward and sin no more. Not go forward and sleep with more men and continue being a prostitute. Stop your immoral behavior and you will be accepted into the kingdom of God. In its most eagerly anticipated section, the Vatican repeated its rejection of gender theory or the idea that one's biological sex can change. It said God created man and woman as biologically different, separate beings, and said people must not tinker with that or try to make oneself God. Thank you, Pope Francis. It follows that any sex change intervention, as a rule, risks threatening the unique dignity the person has received from the moment of conception. Life. It distinguished between gender affirming surgeries, which it rejected, and genital abnormalities that are present at birth or develop later. These abnormalities can be resolved with the help of healthcare professionals, it said. So if you're a hermaphrodite and you're born with both uh, sets of genitals, then surgery can be performed. And there it is. Well, that, that's also contradictive as well. Advocates for LGBTQ plus Catholics immediately criticized the document as outdated, harmful, and contrary to the stated goal of recognizing the infinite dignity of all God's children. They warned it could have real-world effects on trans people, fueling anti-trans violence and discrimination. It possible, yes, absolutely. Uh, the truth is, is like, well, if you uh, believe that drugs are awesome and you want to shoot up heroin all day, is it okay to affirm that? Should we say, yeah, this person's totally okay. He believes that, like, you know, this is helping him. Let's go ahead, let him help himself by destroying himself. While it lays out a wonderful rationale for why each human being, regardless of condition of life, must be respected, honored, and loved, it does not apply this principle to gender-diverse people, which is uh, all made up in your mind. I'm this, I'm that, I feel this, I feel that. And I talked about this before. It's all about the lack of uh, survival. Humans aren't um, in danger of death like we used to be when we lived outside. So now we have all this time to come up with all kinds of ideas and even contemplate. Like It's, it's kind of like a philosophy uh, a session where you're like, oh, perhaps I would be more comfortable as a cat, or perhaps I would be more comfortable as a baby. Well, those are kind of like, mm, no, but oh yeah, you can be comfortable as a uh, the opposite of what you are. Let's go inside out. Mm, here you go. Super happy. I think the main difficulty faced by the document is that it attempts to affirm the church's authentic commitment to human dignity in the face of troubling history on the part of the church itself around tax on that dignity. Trans-Catholic theologian. Uh, 
Anyway, the document's existence, rumored since 2019, was confirmed in recent weeks by the new prefect, the uh, Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, Argentine Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, a close Francis confidant. So there it is. It's out. Uh, it's denounced. Boom. Sean Diddy Combs, former bodyguard, claims music mogul had tapes of politicians and princes. He had every room bugged. No doubt. Okay? If you're up to something like that, if you have the ability to uh, have these people in your home, likely you're going to have security cameras around. And at some point, uh, you realize that uh, honeypots are real sticky, and you can uh, trap people in them, and then you can get what you want. So most definitely uh, Diddy, especially after hearing about Epstein, he certainly would have gone ahead and put uh, cameras everywhere. Because pretty much that's why Epstein got murdered, is uh, because they didn't want all that information to get out. Well... Is there a kill switch? I don't know. The former bodyguard of Sean Diddy Combs claims the music mogul had blackmail tapes of politicians, princes, and other prominent individuals who were involved in his sex parties. Combs, who has been hit with a barrage of physical abuse, rape, and sexual trafficking allegations, had his homes in Miami and Los Angeles raided by Department of Homeland Security last month, during which federal agents seized computers and other electronic devices. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, suggests that Diddy may have tapes of politicians, princes, and preachers who can now be in the hands of the feds. I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. There you go. I don't think it's only... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you imagine he had every room bugged? When asked why Combs Media Department had stayed silent on the allegations against him, Dill responded, either they took part in some of the stuff that happened or they're scared that it may mess up their brand. Jesse Waters speculated uh, that the tapes, if they exist, are now in the hands of the feds. And that's a lot of blackmail. There you go. Combs has, or Combs has denied all allegations against him and has been hit with any criminal charges as of yet. And he is singing like a canary, if you're asking me. EV ownership ticks up, but fewer non-owners want to buy one. Close to half now say they would not buy an EV. So we had Buick come out being like, we're not selling these. Don't bring them on our lot. They're getting bought out by... a. Uh, their uh, GMC or whatever. Then you got Ford, uh, all their dealers, over half are like, don't bring them to my lot. And they're like, we're going to buy you out. We're putting the EVs down. Well, guess what? 7% of Americans, up from 4% a year ago, report that they own an electric vehicle. Hey, congratulations. The ad increase is matched by an equal decline in the percentage saying they're seriously considered buying one from 12 to 9%. Meanwhile, fewer Americans, 35% down from 43% in 2023, say they might consider buying an EV in the future. Thus, even as some people have moved ahead with their intent to buy an EV in the past year, public demand for the cars has contracted 100%. Just look at Tesla stock. It is like just tanking people are shorting that to pieces um byd over in china they're producing cars at an enormous rate at half the cost uh elon has come out and said listen if we don't keep tariffing and uh subsidizing uh our electrical vehicles vehicles over in america tesla's gone we can't compete with china over less than half adults 44 percent say they are either seriously considering or might consider buying a vv in the future uh down from 55 percent while the proportion not intending to buy one has increased from 41 to 48%. Yeah, so it's half and half, a little half and half, you know? And uh, basically, it's until you buy one, you realize uh, they're pretty garbage. You know, it takes forever for them to charge, and you have to wait to charge them. So imagine going to get your gas. Sometimes you've got to wait behind someone. Sometimes that jerk will leave his car there and go pay inside, and you're twiddling your thumbs, maybe wait like 5, 10 minutes, and then you pull up, fill up your gas. Total transaction, maximum. 10 minutes even at a busy gas station maybe 15 okay you're talking at a charging station minimum half an hour minimum and that's like a quarter to a half a, a charge so imagine you're traveling around and you got to charge a car all the time well guess what it costs money too depending on where you are if you want to get that fast charge extra bucks income age politics key factors tied to ev ownership and consideration upper income americans are the subgroup most likely to own an ev with 14 percent doing so up from six percent last year the ratio may affect reflect sorry the much higher purchase price of evs compared with traditional gasoline power vehicles another 11 percent of upper income americans are seriously considered buying an ev the combined 25 percent compares with 14 percent of middle income and nine percent of lower income americans who own or are seriously considered buying an ev rich man's car you know what happens when the battery goes costs like 10 grand <sighs> there's no infrastructure for these as well like god try driving around like california yeah sure lots you go to middle america rural areas <sighs> good luck 
Activists want energy companies to pay climate damages that could imperil U.S. national security, former Joint Chiefs say. Oil and gas critical to national security, economic stability, and military preparedness. But no, it's all about EVs, remember? We need to get these EVs out, everything electrified by 2050. Oil, gas, bad. Electricity, good. Oil and gas products remain critical to national security. Two former chairmen of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said in a legal brief, weighing in on closely watched court case in Hawaii that has activists calling on America's top energy companies to pay damages for contributions to climate change. Yeah, this got approved. A decision against these companies could have massive repercussions on national security and foreign policy that have not been considered. Oil and gas products are critical to national security, economic stability, and military preparedness. Retired General Richard B. Myers and a Admiral Michael G. Mullen wrote in an amicus brief filed last week in Hawaii Supreme Court, which is headlining the high-profile case. The case has pitted the city of Honolulu against Sunoco, Exxon, Chevron, and other U.S. energy firms in what critics have described as a hyper-ideological bid by far-left activists to strong-arm progressive lifestyle choices on the American public and destroy the country's multi-billion dollar oil industry. The city wants these companies to pay billions to offset the alleged repercussions of climate change, potentially opening the floodgates for a flurry of similar cases from activists who are against the use of fossil fuels. And there you have it. Keep you posted on that. Health Canada sells $170 million worth of COVID-19 ventilators for scrap metal. So Canada is like liberal, of course, you're well aware of that, and their spending is off the charts. Uh, it went from $2 billion to uh, $102 billion under Trudeau. Well, what's the deal here? Starfish Medical designed a Health Canada certified ventilator in six months, normally a multi-year effort. Congratulations. COVID-19 ventilators purchased under a $169.5 million contract by Canada's health agency have been sold as scrap metal. Well, why didn't they keep them just in the event they could use them in the future? New ventilator parts in unopened shipping cartons bearing the Canadian Emergency Ventilators branding were auctioned off during a three-month period ending February 2023, according to records obtained by Blacklock's report of the ventilators were bought by Public Health Agency of Canada under a sole source contract. Are they going to jack us up here? Yeah, totally. Okay, so whatever. Anyway, just a huge waste of money again. Uh, 170, 170 million dollars down the drain all of those ventilators and uh, one more thing vax wastage returns to billions uh, it was criticized in the cbc even that um, the rollout of the uh, the vaccination process was a little bit hampered and wasn't as great uh, don't ban me youtube i didn't say anything incorrect yet uh, so basically there's overall wastage increase, and it's hit $2 billion worth of expired shots. Well, the uptick uh, has gone down. You know what I mean? People aren't getting the vaccine like they were, so what are they doing? They're throwing it away. So we got $2 billion worth of vaccines getting flushed down the toilet, $170 million worth of scrap metal gone. And now we have the most expensive mugshot in history and it ain't donald trump a lot of people were like oh man donald trump's mugshot so hoorah hoorah put it on t-shirts make some money well these two women settled a lawsuit forcing them to remove hijabs from mugshots so how else are you supposed to get a visual a mugshot is supposed to be a representation of the individual eyes don't represent everything of course they don't change over time your baby eyes are the same as your old man eyes but everything else changes so maybe they're onto something i don't think so new york city will pay 17.5 million dollars to settle a class action lawsuit over forcing women to remove hijabs from mugshots their lawyers and advocates said in a statement friday more than 3600 in the class action lawsuit will be eligible for payments of approximately 7000 to 13000 dollars nearly four years after the police agreed to change their policy on religious head coverings the settlement needs to be approved by the federal judge overseeing the case we'll see about that this is a milestone for new yorkers privacy and religious rights said albert fox khan executive director of the advocacy organization surveillance technology oversight project the nypd should never have stripped these religious new yorkers of their head coverings and dignity this wasn't just an assault on their rights but on everything our city claims to believe in on March 16, 2018, Jamila Clark and Arwa Aziz filed a complaint against the city alleging police made them remove their hijabs from mugshots. The two women became the named plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit, which covers arrests that happened between March 16, 2014 and August 23, 2021 in the city. 
Clark had been arrested for filing a bogus protective order, order against her abusive husband. Great job. Uh, court documents said she said the NYPD had threatened to prosecute her if she didn't remove her hijab. Yeah, because that's part of it. Like, imagine I'm a white guy. Imagine. And I wore a ski mask during the, uh, the uh, perpetration of a crime. And I said, no, 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 sir. I'm a... Uh, a Belaclavian, okay? And this is part of my religious thing, and you must recognize it. I'd never take off my Belaclava. And they would say, shut up, and they would take it off, and I would have no chance at a court settlement. Um, it took a, a photo of Clark while she wept and begged to put the coverings back on. Uh, when they forced me to take off my hijab, I felt as if I were naked. I'm not sure if words can capture how exposed and violated I felt. Clark said in a statement, I'm so proud today to have played a part in getting justice for thousands of New Yorkers. This settlement proves I was right all those years ago when I said it was wrong to remove my hijab for a mugshot. I hope New Yorker, no New Yorker ever has to experience what I went through. Yo, here's the deal. You committed a crime, okay, and they need your photo ID. And what they should have done is brought women in, not men, because apparently you're not supposed to wear your hijab in front of men. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. Maybe they could have made it a bit more comfortable. Maybe that's the deal. Maybe this is the policy changed. So uh, NYPD changed his policy in 2020, allowing all arrestees to retain their religious head coverings unless they fall within limited exceptions, court documents said. And we don't know what those limited exceptions are, but it's probably like if you're white and not brown, then you don't get to play ball. And there it is, people. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger. Again, uh, 10,000 likes, the mask comes off. I'll reveal the pure handsomeness of this uh, oozing machismo man here. And the blueberries and all that lovely stuff. Like and subscribe. Sigma Tiger, signing out.